I'm like a bicycle on the moon. Hey everyone, this is Diego here, a member of PATH, and since I was a child, I was always mesmerized with stars, different galaxies, wormholes. I was always imagining myself being like a captain of a spaceship, flying across the galaxies. I'm visiting a very special space interactive art exhibition, which is called Cosmic Dust, and with the use of different technologies of like VR, AR, MR, holographic effects, etc., we will get a feel of that sci-fi space experience. So let's get started. Wow, it's like the rocket launching installation. The current technology of propelling rockets into space is based on the burning of the fuel. Here you can see that different kinds of fuel will produce different kinds of colors of the flames. You see the yellow color and it's like our traditional fuel. But if you use the liquid oxygen, this flame will become blue. And then if you use another kind, it will like just go different colors. So we use rockets like this to pretty much bring anything that we want into space, satellites, payload, etc. And here we can see five models of the Long March series rockets that were developed here in China. And the scale is like one to 30 or one to 20. So you can imagine like the real rocket is like 20 times as big as this one. The Long March rockets have embarked on their journey since 1960s, giving birth to a total of four generations and 20 distinctive models. It is these generations of rockets that have shouldered our collective aspiration for space exploration. Guys, so I'm not taking a nap. This is actually a special vibrating seat in order for like astronauts to be ready for the weightless environment and also the vibrating environment. When the rocket is launching, there's like special seat for them to be trained. So I want to kind of try it out. <laughs> The concept of space breeding involves conducting plant and animal breeding experiments in the space environment to study the effects of microgravity and cosmic radiation on living organisms. Right here, you can actually see one of the examples of space breeding. Just look over here. This is your favorite pumpkin, but it's been to space and back. And you see the shape is really, really interesting. It's like a sea star. How much do I weigh on the moon? It's 11.6 kilograms, guys. I'm like a bicycle on the moon. This room is really cool. Here you can peacefully marvel at the different stages of the stellar evolution. You can also feel like the fourth dimension and stuff. Oh, this is the black hole. <laughs> What interests you? Uh, like when I jump, I will fly. Oh, yeah, for a long time. Yes. What about the exhibition? Is there anything that you like here? Uh, I like drawing there. Yeah, so this is your spaceship. Yes. Do you have any thing or any area you like? Which one do you like? It's like in the middle of the screen, it talks about some things in the sky. For example, you can just lift the box, it can fly very far, and it's very different from now. When we were talking about space breeding, you can hear actually by some seeds that were sent to space and then brought back to Earth. And after the, you know, the, all the changes that it went through, you can actually grow some space pacho seed. We try to reach the stars, we envision extraterrestrial ecosystems, we do experiments in space, but why does space travel and exploration captivate our hearts so much? And especially here in China with the recent carrier rocket launches. You know, I think it's because we are born to explore. We're born to find answers. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Onsite. I'll see you on our next adventure. See you there. <laughs>